Denver, 1950. A funny smell distracts pedestrians and visitors. It comes from the park in the 23rd and Welton Streets. It is the fragrance of teriyaki chicken from the bento colliding with the smell of hot dogs. What is the origin of such an extravagant aroma? The same cheers and curses that can be heard from the old ladies in the bleachers in an unlikely language to hear on American soil only a few years after World War II, Japanese. The reason why such a unique crowd gathered every weekend in that place is simple. They were supporting the Denver Nisei in their weekend match. This was the golden age of the Denver Japanese Baseball League. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, and join us through a story of migration, suffering, and hope. How was it that just a few years after World War II, an entire community made Denver the mecca of Japanese-American baseball? This story, beautifully portrayed recently by Andy Yamashita in the Denver Post, begins long before World War II. It all began after an event that prompted the Meiji Emperor's rise which drastically changed Japan's history over the next few decades. Interestingly, this event was indirectly influenced by the United States. In the 19th century, Japan had a feudal system that was isolated from the world. The shogunate wanted to preserve their culture and values from the significant changes occurring in Western countries. In 1853, U.S. Commodore Matthew C. Perry visited Japan looking for a treaty that would open up Japanese ports to American trade. He believed that to convince them, it was a good idea to show them how powerful the young American nation had become. Local feudal lord Shimazu Nariakira was shocked. Those large warships and weapons that the Americans brought were way more advanced than those in Japan. He was convinced, if we take initiative, we can dominate. If we do not, we will be dominated. Some of the most powerful clans agreed that Japan needed an industrial revolution. They pushed the end of the shogunate. The imperial family regained power, and from 1868, the Meiji Emperor initiated major reforms. But part of the population paid the price for the change in the first years. They suffered from poor living conditions and high unemployment. Among them, a small group heard stories about America as the land of opportunities. They moved to the States, hoping for a better life. By 1905, after the Russo-Japanese War in 1905, the number of migrants was over 30,000. They settled mostly in California and the West Coast. It was not easy for Japanese migrants to integrate smoothly into the community. Their local peers resented their agricultural industry's success a breeding ground for hatred and false rumors that created an anti-Japanese sentiment. They were called the Yellow Peril. Very soon, legalized discrimination was a fact, as American laws strongly restricted Japanese immigration. During World War II, Japan became an enemy of the United States, which helped to push harassment to its peak. An estimated 120,000 Japanese Americans and Japanese nationals or citizens residing in the United States were forcibly interned in 10 different camps across the U.S., including entire families with their children. Internment was a system of legalized racial oppression. All detentions were based on race or descent, with no trace of criminal activity whatsoever. When the war was finally over, many families that survived the horror searched for a fresh new start far from the West Coast. The chosen place was Colorado, mainly the city of Denver. Denver was not a random pick. A few years earlier, Colorado Governor Ralph Carr had fervently opposed Japanese-American citizens' racial persecution. He resisted interning American citizens and depriving them of their fundamental rights because of their racial background. In a famous speech, Carr said, The Japanese are protected by the same constitution that protects us. An American citizen of Japanese descent has the same rights as any other citizen. If you harm them, you must first harm me. I was brought up in small towns where I knew the shame and dishonor of race hatred. I grew to despise it because it threatens our happiness. Denver was the symbol of hope for a whole community of Japanese Americans after World War II. But the relation between the Japanese and Colorado started long before, strongly connected with their love for baseball. Robert Fitz is the author of Issei Baseball, the story of the first Japanese American ballplayers. The book highlights the Denver Mikado, and its roots connected with one of Denver's first all-Japanese-American teams. Starting in the 20th century, 
Japanese-American teams had sprung up across the state. Teams were founded in farming communities in Colorado, like Fort Lupton, Greeley, and Brighton. Mining camps located in the mountains all had teams as well. The love of baseball would be a relief in the darkest moments. Mr. Masayomi Shira played in the baseball leagues and was imprisoned in relocation camps in Arkansas. In 2020, at age 92, he was interviewed and told the Denver Post how important baseball was in those terrible times. I think it really affected camp life because it gave us something to do. It gave people something to watch and gather over. There must have been a thousand people to watch high school games, like the whole camp turned up to watch. In the late 40s, the Northern Colorado Japanese Baseball League was becoming more and more popular. The tri-state Denver Buddhist Temple was where the Japanese-American youth met each other and shared their devotion to the game. At 23rd and Welton, the old field, called Lawson Park, was known for a unique feature. It was like a diamond squeezed into a rectangle. Nowadays, the dimensions are typical. Fans have less room, and there are modern apartments. The games were not only about competition and fun, it was a way to be a part of a community, build friendships, and find other people with similar life experiences. Sundays were the day of the games. The whole community showed up at the park. The kids wanted to know about the ball players and to root for them, creating an emotional bond between the entire community. The Japanese grandmothers, called Obashins, were at the field supporting the team. And by the way, they were known for being the hooligans, cheering and even cursing when things went wrong at games. The Japanese league attracted many fans every weekend. But the biggest event was the Labor Day tournament. Japanese-American teams from all over the Rocky Mountain region went to Denver to compete and enjoy the post-game banquets. The tri-state Denver Buddhist Temple baseball team was called the Denver Busay. In the late 40s, the Denver merchants were their direct rivals, though their closest friends in the community. Both teams were finally combined and renamed as the Denver Nisei. The Nisei swept the Japanese league in 1950 and convinced themselves that they could compete not only in Japanese-American tournaments, they became members of the multi-ethnic Metropolitan League, where some teams had college players and even some ex-pros. The players did not earn salaries, but had food and transportation covered. They also received bonuses for hitting home runs or leading the team in batting average. In 1952, they achieved a memorable victory by winning the Metropolitan League proving that they could compete with the best. The dream of the Nisei was diluted as the post-war world unfolded. Several players were recruited to go to the Korean War's front lines, weakening the team and preventing it from remaining competitive in the Metropolitan League. The Japanese League continued, though. The generation of players in the late 1940s and early 1950s grew older, and those children who saw their parents play were responsible for bringing the league to life in the years to come. However, the Japanese-American community slowly moved far from Lawson Park, and their new local leagues gained priority. The journey to Lawson Park became increasingly complex, and the mythical Japanese-American League was slowly beginning to fade. The memories with those bleachers, full of almost 3,000 fans, remain sharp in the older adults who survived from that time. The Japanese-American baseball leagues are more than a rarity in the history of Denver, Colorado, and the United States. They are a testament to the determination and dignity of a community, unjustly persecuted and abused. But above all, this story is an example of redemption. The present always offers a country the opportunity to make amends for the mistakes of the past, and we can still make suffering the engine of a prosperous future. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.